Why do any of us bother with this thing called music? What the heck are we doing? I was once described by a rock and roll manager as up a tree in someone else's garden. Do you know what? He was right. I was up a tree in someone else's garden. Mad as a box of frogs, as some might say. But do you know what I said to him? I said it might be someone else's tree in someone else's garden, but the view is bloody nice from up here. And he went away and he left me alone. And I went and I built a website that gave equal status to unsigned artists and signed artists, presented them to the public on the level playing field with an unsigned chart and based on merit, the quality of the music. What a delicious idea. And that would have succeeded if it wasn't for that pesky little financial crisis of 2008. And here we are again in the middle of another pesky crisis. But we're not going to let that defeat us. No, we're going to move forward. With Sound Angels music, we're giving inspiration and insight to artists. We're giving them the benefit of 20 years of experience collectively along my journey, along the journey of the founders of Sound Angels, some of whom are here today. And we're also giving them hope. We're focusing in on their talent, their raw talent. We're focusing in on amazing songs and we're giving them a platform again to speak directly to the people. This is what we're doing with Sound Angels Music. And this guide, this book, with this experience contained within it, is going to help them on that journey. So it's going to help the artists who buy it. It's also going to help the artists who can't afford to buy it, can't afford anything because this crisis has meant their income has gone down to zero. Because 30% of the proceeds of the guide will go towards our work in Sound Angels. We're going to talk a little bit later about our project, some of which we've run through a collective of studios and producers called Resonant Wave, and some of which have yet to emerge because we're building an app called You Gig Big that's going to unite fan, artist and industry. We're going to seamlessly put those three parties together in a recognition that each of those parties is as important as any other one. It's not just about the artist up on that stage. And for the artist, it's not all about me, 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 look at me. It's about what message do I have for the world? What do I bring to this planet? What am I trying to say? Now, all of the founders of Sound Angels believe in something bigger, something bigger than the self, something bigger even than the community. We've got faith in a higher power. But you may or may not share that faith. But perhaps you will share the beauty and the power of music to move people to change lives. So we're going to look at positive songs. We're going to put as many positive songs into the world as physically possible to do with everything within our power to do so. But for now, let's enjoy this virtual space. Things we can't enjoy gigs in the real world at the moment. Let's revel in this innovation and say thanks to our host, James Erskine, who is hosting us here in this space, going to sing a couple of songs for us now. And also a big thanks to Sarah Vianne of Graceful Solutions, who's hosting this on Zoom today. So please relax and listen to James, and we'll catch up on the flip side of this little gig, and we'll chat some more and celebrate also the life of Steve Brown, the producer that was connected with many of our artists back in the day. So thanks for being here. And for now, will you please enjoy Mr. James Erskine. This one's called Coming Home. Though I still feel it all inside The thought of her makes me want to cry Why not give up in a heartbeat just to be with you? No, I can't place the time I realized how much I do Cause you're a perfect sky, but you're a hurricane too 
Yes, you are. You're the reason why I wanna come on home to you. I'm coming home. If I could get you on this line. Wanna come on home to you? I'm coming home. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Okay, good evening, everybody. Having a marvelous time out there. Um, this is a song that was written for a time of festivals a few years ago. Hopefully, we're going to get back to this over the next few months uh, where we can go out and see people that we love and do things with those people that we equally love, hopefully, involving some music. And uh, this is called Flying.
Hello. Good to see you all. Can you hear me loud and clear? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Well, I have to say thank you to James for putting that little intro video together. I think I prefer my virtual self. Much less of a belly and a lot more rock and roll. <laughs> Talking of rock and roll, I hope you all got yourselves a suitable rock and roll beverage. Um, either a kind of red stripe or a, a cup of uh, honey and lemon for the vocal cords. Either, either way, just roll how you like. Strap yourselves in for a, um, a gentle yet entertaining evening of bits and pieces all about sound angels. Um, some of you have seen fragments of this as we've been putting it together. And it's been been quite a journey from having been invited to set up a record label fit for the 21st century to watching the whole world melt in front of our very eyes um, to this point here. Quite a bit of stuff has happened. And um, it's actually 20 years of stuff that's wrapped up in this here guide that uh, we've put together. And I say we because although I wrote the words in it, there's so many people who've encouraged along the way and inspired and just generally helped out and, and moved things forward. Because at the end of 2019, I was riding a bit of a high, having come from a, from a bit of a road trip um, and just done some really interesting stuff. And this record label was about to take flight and then the working capital disappeared and then COVID happened. And, and so basically it, it was fellow creatives who encouraged a move forward rather than a total collapse. And it's led, led to some incredible alliances. So Dan has put the design together. We've got Henry who's building us an app, more of which later. Sarah, who's been an endless encouragement. So many other people. There's acknowledgements at the end of the book. And I think most of you are named and shamed some, somewhere in that. But yeah, just to, to try and say a little bit about what Sound Angels is about. Like I said in the intro, it's, it's really kind of uniting the bits and pieces of the music industry, the fan, the artist, the industry, there are three parties in this equation and they're literally all as important as each other. And the artists that I admire the most are the ones that don't stand up on the stage and try and make themselves look good and look at how fantastic I am. But they recognise that the people in the mosh pit or the people up in the gods, people who bought those tickets are, are, are as important as they are. And so are the industry. I mean, there's, there's venues dying at the moment because of the whole COVID thing. And so we've got Sound Angels, which is kind of the mothership. That's the, the encouragement, the, the, the source of inspiration, the advice for artists. And we, we've done all sorts of things. We, we've um, remote edited videos that were put together in Costa Rica for artists who needed a bit of guidance in terms of their, 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 their visual uh, appeal. Um, we've put people into studios with producers that they never dreamed of working with. And you saw Tim at the end of that, that piece there after James had played Tim Clayton um, from the band higher lovers. He popped up. We've just placed him uh, with a guy called uh, Paul Tipler, who's famous for his work with placebo and idle wild and elastica and a host of celebrities. And so we've got all the connections to put people together and create lots of amazing collaborations. Um, but we do everything for in terms of sourcing bits and pieces that people need in music. And a lot of the framework of how to make progress in music is in the guide that we put together. But there's lots of additional support from outside of that we can provide through Sound Angels, and, and we do. I think one of the things I'm proudest of is when people need us, we're there. And I, I noticed that Amanda is, is with us today. Nice one, Amanda, from your, your new home. And I, I don't say that lightly because Amanda has been through the mill. She's, she's an incredibly talented artist, encountered her a couple of years ago, and it's been a really, really rough ride for her. And I, I won't give all of the details, but if you could imagine some of your worst nightmares, she's been through them all and she's come out the other side. And to a greater or lesser extent, as life has allowed and as the building of Sound Angels has allowed, we, we have supported her through that. And she's now sat there in her new house, homed, and that wasn't always a certainty, but it is now. So that's a beautiful thing. Big love to you, Amanda. And I'm very, very pleased about that. But we, we've started negotiations with some producers for her because she's got a huge body of songs. 
I'm going to show you a little clip of one of them now, um, but we're still hopeful that a negotiation will complete with um, a guy who's worked with Elton John and, and many, many of the greats, Led Zeppelin as well as a guy called Stuart Epps, who's also been very supportive through this. But for now, I'm going to show you a little clip of one of Amanda's current songs, and this shows her back. Let's just share my screen a moment. It's not sharing, Dean. Yeah, I noticed. Okay. The sound is. It does sound good, doesn't it? So just a, a little flavour there of uh, some of Amanda's work. And like I say, we're, we're really, really proud of her. We're, we're ready to put her in the studio later in the year um, on a couple of different projects with different producers. Uh, and just generally, Sound Angels has encouraged her, advised her, just moved things along and made some of those crucial connections that means that there's a springboard for, for the future. Um, I also mentioned the app, which is UGIG Big, and we'll, we'll come on to that later. But one, one of the other things that I'm really chuffed about is we put together a loose collective of studios with people locked in their, their homes and people recording from, from with whatever they've got to hand, basically. And I know Nick, and I, I'll give you the award for the best dressed man in the room. Fair play to you. Nick Milan there, <laughs> he's producing some great stuff at home. But what we're doing is we're hooking up artists with producers to give advice on home recording, how to get the best out of whatever setup you have got your hands on and what equipment to get just to take it just that step up and then doing mixing and mastering. And that's called Resonant Wave Studios. And uh, Sara has already been involved with a couple of collaborations. So I'm going to hand over to her to describe how that all happened and her, her take on all of that. Well, yeah, Dean, uh, I think one of Dean's biggest strengths is networking and um, knowing some good people really. So he managed to introduce me to a couple of producers actually. And I'm gonna play a clip from one of the songs that um, I did, cause it's not Christmassy. Girl, I grow in the hair long. Nature and baking again, slowing things down in the wake. So she flees to fields and towns to the sun, breathing in the fresh breeze. She feels at one with the earth and the rivers, the is your blue sky. And hopes once again it will be alright The great pause, the great awakening The plains are grounded and industry shaking The great pause, the great awakening But there is peace in what yeah, 
so we wrote a song about the um, the pandemic, and um, Dean hooked me up with Stephen Bentley, who did the production, and then it was chosen to be the anthem for the launch, wasn't it, Dean? A, a pre-launch where we we had a, a song where the video was recorded at the Glastonbury because we had a, a lot of echoes with the Glastonbury Festival and we were in, in contact with Michael Evis over over a few things so we used that as the pre-launch thing and then when we did our main launch Sarah's song The Great Pause was a very very resonant song because it, it, it talked about this crisis and us literally going from full speed to boom stop and giving us time to think about how we're living our lives, what we're doing. And we were very proud to present that. It having come through the Resonant Wave Studios and literally watching the process unfold in front of our eyes of idea of a song, how am I going to do this? Here's a guy who knows his stuff. And just watching it all take shape is quite a, a beautiful process, very gratifying. Yeah, we and just need, need a PR expert next time. <laughs> Although I noticed that, that our old radio plugger from the the, um, the website days has crept in through the back door, which is his rightful place. Hello, Mr. Wilton. Glad to have you in the house. He used to work for you two and Mariah Carey uh, back in the day. Ooh. Oh, and Bob Marley as well. So we, we're in good company. So we've, good got company. A ra we've got a radio plugger in the house, have we? We have. Yeah. Shh. I'll let you guess who. I've, 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 given, I've already said too much. <laughs> But yeah, so how did you find the process then, Sarah, with the, the whole Resonant Wave thing? Because you work with two producers now, haven't you, on two different projects? Yeah, just really, um, you know, kind of nice people who were willing to do it um, on a goodwill basis at this stage um, and uh, delivered good results. Um, but I am actually... Uh, researching ways to pay people now. Do you want me to tell yeah, people about that please, a little bit? Please elaborate. Yeah, well, um, I've been partnering with um, a crowdfunding enterprise called Rocket Fuel, um, just trying to work out how to raise money to pay people and do something a bit more professional because um, being an independent artist is not much fun and I, yeah a, a bloody hard slog so just try uh, just realizing that um the only way to do it really is to collaborate with a team of people who have got the skills that the artist hasn't and you know ideally everybody gets respectfully paid so um i, I could show you the setup briefly if you want should i do that dean I'll just show people the setup on Rocket Fuel just in case it's useful to you. Um, let's have a look. This is basically my page, and I'm going to be putting a, a pitch video there when it's finished. And then I'm just identifying everything that I can offer people in return for contribution. So you, you, so you end up getting a bit of a store. Um, so it's not about just blagging donations, it's just realising that you, you know, you've got stuff that you can sell um, and, it, and it sort of helps you become more, you know, more, more professional and think about what you can actually trade in return to try and build. I mean, a, a, a lot of people probably know about um, crowdfunding already, but, but this one, this one kind of combines... Um, what pa Patreon does as well, because you can kind of set up memberships as well. So I'm kind of hoping that I'll go for, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of uh, have, have a goal and try and raise a certain amount of money for a project, but then I'll inspire people to become or, or join the memberships as well to maybe, you know, hopefully try and get some kind of inflow. So, so I'm not sure if it's actually turning into a sort of record label idea and just going back to the old school really anyway there you go one of the good things about the sound angel setup is because between us and there were five founders and as i said in the intro it was it was founded on christian principles of togetherness and helping each other and just generally putting the 
serving each other aspect first. And, and again, we, we, we're not you know, forcing that ethos on anyone, but we're, we're working with artists who create positive songs. Rocket Fuel that Sarah's just demonstrated there is just one of the tools. And I was fortunate to have done some consulting with the company who put that together. And it combines the best of all of the different um, artist funding mechanisms out there. So you, not only can you sell your music to people and pre-sell items and sell merch you can also ask people to support you generally in a patreon style as well so you can do a combination of those things and if you want to raise say three grand to do an ep and you only make two and a half they don't say oh well, you didn't make your target so bog off you can't have anything you, you get whatever you you raise so in every area of the music world somebody within the sound angels network knows the go-to thing to use and it might not be the obvious thing like most people gravitate to indiegogo or patreon but we know that though it's slightly smaller it works really really well and rocket fuel can, can i've helped um a band raise three grand um to do an ep and some promo that, that did really really well through through rocket fuel and can everybody see those hmm. I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> oh, well done, sir. Well done. <laughs> and there it is, making the music that matters. So again, we're, we're calling for artists that have got songs of hope. It's all positive stuff. It's fr from the perspective of the founders, it's things that, that resonate with the, with the gospel. But in terms of the world, it's just anything that's positive, anything that's, let's just crack on with this together and make good stuff happen. And so we've been people been contacting us through, through that. Um, just to sort of help inspire them and encourage them. And then the two side projects, the Resonant Wave Studios that has spawned a few projects that Sarah's um, alluded to. And then here's the real game changer. It's just a little thing called You Gig Big. And I won't show you the website there because it's still got the Wix branding on it and it's low budget at the moment. But we've got a, a crack developer called Henry who's also in the house. Big up to Henry. He really knows his stuff when it comes to development. I was hoping to show you a little fly-through demo of that app, but it's still in its nascent stages. But a bit patient, because there's me rabbiting on at the beginning of it, but then it goes into a, a montage of music, including Ed Sheeran's cousin, Jethro, who I've worked with in the past, and I, I, I put his music into feature films in the past, and loads of bits and pieces about artists that we work with, and some video stuff. Here's the one from Costa Rica that all painted. Somebody, bless her, Azhar, was stuck in lockdown in Costa Rica. I think she's still there. I don't know if she'll ever come back, but we helped her with the video. A little bands like Eye of the Lion. Let's see if that comes up. There you go, a bit, bit of modern thrashing about for you. <laughs> no, more. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was good. Was that, was that no more or no, let's have some more? <laughs> <laughs> Play so it more. <laughs> it's good, you'll have to have a proper rummage there, Dan. Um, yeah, I will. So <laughs> I'm the one that's who right. created it, I should. <laughs> you should. You should know what's on here, for goodness sake. Just come yeah, on. I should know what's on there. <laughs> And then there's our press page. Um, it shows details of our launch, which um, collided with the 50-year anniversary of Glastonbury. As I say, we were, we were talking to Michael Evers about, about quite a few little projects, and we ended up um, having a video recorded at the Glastonbury site. And I think Rich from Mighty Festival will recognise this band. They played at the Mighty Festival well, not long after they were to summers ago when we were young and free and able to go to, to gigs in fields. Uh, <laughs> and here, last but definitely not leastly, the unfamous guide and endorsed by the legendary Derek Sivers of CD Baby, who sends his, sends his regards. He's busy writing his, his own um, latest book, his third book, 
he sends his apologies. It's also about stupid o'clock in the morning in New Zealand where he's currently based. So th this is just a little bit of schnizzle about the unfamous guide. It's cool because I'm trying to steer artists away from the idea of fame and fortune being their primary aim and a little bit towards as I said again in the introduction, what's my mission in life? What, why have I been given this talent? What message have I got for the world? How, how can I, I help people um, sort of think about their lives and, and just do something useful with my music? And that's really the foundational block of building a successful career because that brings about real connections. And so this little figure here, this £7.50 for the digital the 10 this is really going to help. And it's not only going to help pay my mortgage, because I am taking something from this, from having written the words, and some of the other parties for have, for their input will, will take something. But we are going to reserve 30% for the Sound Angels Foundation and pour money back. Um, we said over 25%, just to cover ourselves in case there's any sort of additional aspects on the, on the marketing side. But notionally 30% been allocated to come back into Sound Angels to help us with our base camp work of just steering artists generally in the, in the right direction. Okay, I think that's enough of that. But before we close um, tonight, what I'd like to do, if, it, if it's all right with you guys, is um, I'd like to remember a, um, a colleague of ours, and there might be some people in the room who, who remember him. There's a, uh, a producer called Steve Brown, and uh, he has worked, <laughs> we used to tease him about this chronically, what, what his breakthrough album, he, he worked with some of the greats as an engineer, has been in the background on, on some of the hugest albums you can imagine. But he actually made his name by, by recording the first Wham! album. And he, mm. he gained himself a reputation in the pop world and became very sought after. But he, his heart and soul was in, it was in rock and roll. And he did the first Manic Street Preachers album. And we worked in the studio with him on, on many a project. And uh, sadly, he was, he was taken away from us at, at Christmas with a tragic accident in, in his home. And for somebody that we worked so closely with and had inspired so many of the bands that we worked with, it was just, just a total devastating shock that, that we lost him, really. Um, as I say, you know, he, he did the Wham! album, then he turned back to rock and roll, did the first Manic Street Preachers album, which many people rate as the best album they've ever done. Certainly, I don't think that, that, personally, I don't think I've ever surpassed this. But I think the piece he's most famous for, and I wasn't intending to play this, but you know what? Is this little number. It's a bit of a flashback for you, but bear with it. Pleased I shared that with you. It, it does date me somewhat, but it, it also it's just a, a kind of a, another indication of the connections that, that, that we have within the industry. Because 
when Steve was delivered a, a demo of 50 songs um, by um, an act that, that I'd followed for many, many years and was, was, was very inspired by, he, he called me up and said, Dino, um, you're a fan of this band. I've just had a demo delivered that's got 50 songs on it and I've got to turn it into an album. So what do I do? And it just so happens as, as kind of... Um, OCD as I am, I actually rated every single song on that 50 demo, 50 track demo, a mark out of 10 for credibility, sonic delight, and also fan appeal. And I, I sent him an email that had it all detailed, all 50 tracks. And he came back to me and went, what's that one that's got a 10 out of 10 for fan appeal and nine out of 10 for sonic delight and eight out of 10 for credibility? I said, well, I thought you'd like that one. Um, and it, it turned out that they, they not only did they carve down an album partly based on, on my recommendations, but also they put that song out as a single. And they, they did some very, very clever PR around it as well. Uh, and I, so I don't talk about it in public much because it, it was their PR campaign that, that did the work. But just being part of the process was exciting. And we got that song into the charts after, I think, something like 12 years of them not having been near the charts having been great act in the past that had many many hit singles and then this one got in under the radar sort of based on some recommendations from inside our camp and those sorts of things have happened all the way along the journey and it's people like steve brown bless him that that, that have helped that because when people within the industry get connected with us and our tribe they see that we're about the grassroots and they see that we're about quality of material so even when we're talking about famous stuff, it, it relates just the same, and, and they, they trust trust our ears. Um, so I'm going to show you another little clip, and I'm I'm afraid I'm I'm going back in the archives, not quite quite as far here, but I'm going to share again and show you Steve Brown working with um, one of our artists. I'm first going to show you a little shot in the studio, Sonic One Studios. That was with a, a little band called Void, who I put with a producer uh, called Sonic Timbo. I forget his, his surname. They have a fantastic studio out in Wales. And Steve Brown, bless him, he, he came and um, <coughs> twiddled the dials for us. And so he, this guy has got platinum discs all over his place. And he's a great loss to the industry because... You know, even though he'd worked with the, the, the highest of the high and the greatest of the great, he would trail his his way up to Wales and come and um, let me tell let me show you a little video. A, a guy called Wayne from Scarlet Rebels. Hello everybody, this is um, Wayne from Scarlet Rebels. Um he used to be the singer songwriter of the rock band Void, who uh, had the pleasure of working with Steve Brown on our debut album. Um so I've been asked to give, I don't know, my thoughts and experiences on Steve and really it's just just a lot of positivity that um, that Steve used to bring. Uh, he was a lovely person, uh, could never do enough for us um, and just his advice and his, um, his general warmth really just sort of guided us through the, the process and he, he did a lot after it after he produced the record that we did so he came down to um where we're from which is a little town outside of swansea called Clackley, um which is literally at the end of the m4 and he used to sleep in the recordings we were working in and then he would um <clears throat> come to my house to shower every day um to set him up for the day so you know he, he was somebody who'd created hits of the hits and wasn't afraid to sort of muck in and, um, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, he was a, he was an absolutely superb person, great character. Um, and, uh, <coughs> until a few weeks before his, his untimely, his untimely um, passing, um, you know, I was in contact with him um, via WhatsApp and uh, texts and stuff like that and um, talking about potentially working together again um so yeah it's really sad that it's happened but um absolute icon of the british music industry and rightly so um and yeah i think you know one of his 
lessons was just to keep writing songs really which is what we've continued to do um evolving through void into scarlet rebels eventually um and yeah so um rest in peace steve and uh we'll catch up again soon mate and that's uh, that's wayne formerly of um of void and now with scarlet rebels and uh, he sounds quite downbeat there obviously because of the uh, the, the loss of steve um but he's actually really really excited inside because he is um about to sign a major record deal which i, I can't talk about because it's under uh, confidentiality at the moment but the uh, the ink is drying on a really incredible um contract um I'm very proud to have brought brought the band scarlet rebels and void to the phoenix festival here here in sirencester and to, to watch a band grow like that is one of the greatest pleasures and and, and steve if he was here he'd, he'd be really really um chuffed for them and i'm pretty sure actually steve would be in this room now if he was here uh, at the risk of going a little bit too far down memory lane i am going to play you one more little clip of steve in the studio with with one of the bands that we work with along the way and it's it's not quite so long ago but um let's uh let's go with this can you all see this yeah yeah Yes. It's going a little bit far back because it's a square <laughs> rather than a rectangle. But let's roll with it because it features uh, Steve in the studio.
SST is making sure that everything's plugged in. <laughs> he was a, he was a great guy. He'd be sad, sadly missed. But on a positive note, Sound Angels, um, we, we kind of hope that we're going to see Steve again. And also we're working with, with loads of other producers and industry people all the time. Uh, and a lot of the time it's about being on these people's radar. So although we're, we're starting small here, and I thank you and bless you, every single one of you for being here, from small acorns, mighty oaks, as they say, and so it's all about igniting those connections, making little things happen, growing, moving on, mo moving forward. And I think with the whole Sound Angels music, Resonant Wave Studios and You Gig Big, when that hits, that's going to make quite an impact, even though we'll trial it locally to start with and then, then we'll move it out around the country. So really hoping for, for um, some, some good things from this. So before we close... Um, Tonight, I just wanted to, to, you know, give an opportunity for people to make comment or ask questions or, or, or you know, voice their thoughts in in any direction if if you'd like to. Anybody like to chip in? I suppose I've got a question. We've been to this meeting today. What happens next? Ah, very good question. Well, I think getting in touch is is probably the first port of call. So for yourselves or, or anybody out there in your network who you think might benefit from what we're doing, it, the simplest thing to do is to email help at mm. soundangelsmusic.com. And that can go in either direction. So if you're needing help or you're willing to help or you want to do a little bit of both, then mm. help at soundangelsmusic.com. Yes. Um, also... Um, we've got some social media started again from small foundations, but it's, it's starting to grow. Uh, the Instagram isn't quite up there and running yet, but we've got a little Twitter feed, which is sound angels muso on Twitter and sound angels music on Facebook. And, uh, Sarah and I've been, been discussing recently and we're looking to start a group, um, possibly called the sound angels cloud or, or notionally called the sound angels cloud for, for folks just just to, to hang out and so that'll be off the back of sound angels facebook so if you go to um facebook.com forward slash sound angels music yes and then we'll send out a little notification soon about a little group that we'll start well dean yeah i've noticed on facebook that what i can do is actually create a group from all the attendees of um who's bothered to turn up today actually so if people <laughs> are interested yeah so um, if people would like to continue to stay in contact, we're hoping to build proper friendship and mutual support, mutual support here. So I'm going to, um, uh, if, if Dean's in, a, in agreement, I'm going to create a group from, from today's event. Um, yeah, if everybody's happy with that. Hang on, I'm think, thinking about it. Everyone booked through Eventbrite, didn't they? Not Facebook. So, is everybody on Facebook? Does everybody like Facebook? Yeah. Mr. Flint is I mean, we, we've got, we've got everyone. No, <laughs> never. It's for old people, isn't it, Dan? Oh, it's horrible, really. <laughs> It's, it's not that. I just, I, I just hate it. I just absolutely hate it. It, it is horrible. It's, it is horrible. But we've got everybody's email address from the Eventbrite thing, actually. So if there's any, any events or anything, um, we could do it that way. Mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, you're right. Sorry, Dean. We will have to create one. If we're able to call it Sound Angels Cloud, because I like that, then then we'll roll with it. But but basically, it, it, the, the the port of call by email is help at soundangelsmusic.com. Our social media is forward, whatever platform, forward slash Sound Angels Music, or on Twitter, because they're weird, Sound Angels Muso, um, not enough characters. Talking of Twitter, though, I know somebody particularly active on Twitter, in a ragey, styly, but beautifully so, is the man in the room with the best head gift. Not you I'm talking about this time, Dan, it's my boy, Ethan, <laughs> Ethan Hill. It was a wave. He's actually named after one of the best producers in the world, who I saw on tour once playing guitar. He was incredible. A fella called Ethan Johns, and I had the pleasure of, of meeting him again recently at um, Real World Studios, uh, Peter Gabriel Studio, and uh, he had a new band together. He, he's produced, I think, The Killers and Kings of Leon. 
he's, he's up in those echelons, but still producing grassroots music of a style that would sit well with with Sound Angels music. So, I mean, even the greats are, are into this vibe of, of growing things organically and just getting a bit down and dirty and, and making interesting stuff happen. So, uh, so yeah. Cool. Mm. So then, guys, I think we've got a really nice um, cross-section of fan, artist and industry here. And, and like I say, it's that, that, that trio, that collaboration between all the parties that, that what, what we're trying to kindle here. And as we come out of this god-awful crisis, we, uh, we hope those kinds of things are going to start to matter more. And more than that, we've got the technology to sort of back that up and, and make those sorts of things happen. So, uh, so yes, unless there's, there's anything else anybody wants to add, I just will thank you. How long is this uh, video going to be around for, Dean? Uh, I don't know. I think Sarah's um, recording it, aren't you, Sarah? Mm -hmm. The one that we're on now, this, here, this very Zoom. No, that's OK. A lot of videos disappear, that's all. They do disappear not long afterwards. Um, so that's good. Can I put it on the Music Eye webpage? I'm happy with that. Sorry, you called hey, me. Give me a coffee. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just mm. hoping that um, the fact that my internet went down didn't affect it. But if it hasn't, then, then, then that's cool. And, and thinking about it, if we've got everybody's email addresses, we can, we can tell you how you can get hold of the guide and everything useful like that. Mm. So, yeah, we can tell you about the Facebook group and the guide by email if that's okay. Yeah. That's all more than okay. Dean, can I just say a special thank you before we go? Um, basically, for everything, all the support. Yes, stupid. Yes, stupid. Mummy sticking to manager. <laughs> He's just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> I just would like to say a big thank you to Dean and obviously the, the team at Sound Eagles Rack for everything. Um, obviously, it's been a very long journey, and um, I just want, I feel so blessed that you've been there from the start before big progressions have started to happen with the music and you've stuck through it with the journey and um, I'm excited for the next steps and I just know everyone's going to be so blessed with this guide that you've created um, and uh, I just feel so thankful that um, yeah I've, I've got the opportunity to uh, work with you on my uh, projects and um, and Cupid is very thankful as well so I just want to say thank you so much and um, yeah I'm looking forward to the future. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Thank you, Amanda. That's a wonderful, wonderful note, note to end on. Mm. Good stuff. All right. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, one more glimpse of the website because I know you all want to see it again. And Dan's beautiful, handy work. And, um, <laughs> and they're going to play us out with a video that, that was recorded somewhere special. And I spent every Tuesday morning for about felt like six months, but maybe it wasn't as long as that, talk, talking to the, the, the founder of, of, of Glastonbury, uh, just so privileged. And I, I'm grateful too for this journey in music and on all of the amazing experiences that sort of pinch yourself type moments that I've been privy to. And so, so, although I don't like to shout about them, some of those are in the guide as well, because actually there's a lot of lessons and a lot of truth in the experiences that people have jumped that chasm of recognition and achieve global fame uh, and some of their journeys haven't been pretty um, and some of those journeys have been amazing from the outside but horrific from the inside and I think a lot of artists can really really learn from that so our, our connection with people like Michael Evis and other people that we've met along the way are, are very very valuable in, in informing positive happy journeys for artists who might read the pages of, of um, unfamous and, uh, and and get something from it so um shout it to the rooftops us few us happy few <laughs> are here in the foundational moment so again thank you very much for for being here and i'll give you a quick glimpse of the website and then play us out bless you thank you